Greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that's above every other name, at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses that He, He, the Lord Jesus Christ, He is Lord. He's above it all. In Him, we live, we move, we have our being. You know, living and moving and having your being in Christ Jesus is a place, it's a spiritual position. It's a spiritual position of being one in I am. So, Jesus Christ is the gate, the doorway, the access point, the restoration of who we are comes through Him, through that that sacrifice made, the blood is, is the, the blood of Christ Jesus pays for not just our sins, but the sins of the whole world, and anybody that applies it has access to the King. It's about the King and the Kingdom. So we now move forward in that, in the reality and in the truth of who we are in Christ, more than conquerors in Christ Jesus and in all that goes on right now on the earth at such a time as this with all of the games all of the machinations of the worlders to try to steal, kill, destroy um, divide and conquer you know we've talked about this for years um, I talked about this a long time ago about just even the British Empire at at the height of its empire was controlling a nation of a billion people in India with just uh, 3,000 troops. So, <coughs> how do you do, how do you control that many people with such a f small force? Well, you keep those people fighting against each other. How do you keep those people fighting against each other? Well, you've got to control their minds. You need to make them their own enemy. Their, them their own enemy and if they are their own enemy then they're fighting each other and they don't have time to fight you and then that 3,000 troops can be used to go and grab the person that may be wising up the person that has some questions about it the person that might be a thought leader the person that might actually show people there's another way to do something that 3,000 troops can be used to kill off the Bob Marley or the John F. Kennedy. You know, to go get rid of those voices that they don't want out there. Right? That's that's what those 3,000 troops are. That's what the force is used for. But the psychological component is more powerful than the physical force component because the mind is what they use to create and the control of the mind is what they use to create their hell. And this is why when you, when your mind is set free, you have the mind of Christ. When your mind is set, well, who's, what's the mind of Christ? Well, here's part of it. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Right? Okay. So the mind of Christ is a mind of truth. Here's the thing about truth. If you love the truth, then whenever you encounter the truth, you're going to go with that because that's true. Whether it is in line with um, your predetermined, your prejudices, your, um, your assumptions, your dogma, your whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. If, you, if you've got the, uh, if you come across truth, well, if it's true, you're going to go with it. That's the nature of truth. So the mind of Christ is also a mind of truth. The filter there is this filter of truth. When you encounter the lie, you reject the lie because you don't want the lie. So, um, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So there's, there, is a, there is a way. And it's a mind that is also looking and, and going with that way. Well, Jesus, he said, I only do what I see the Father doing, right? Okay, <clears throat> there's part of the way. Um, I only speak the words I hear from the Father. Okay, there's another part of the way. So you speak and do what you see and hear the Father speaking and doing. Okay, that's part of it. 
So that's that's this mind of Christ is a mind of truth, and there is a way. Now there's there's a couple of ways out there. There's one part of the scriptures talk about there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So there's that way, and then you've got the way of life, which is the way that Christ Jesus leads and guides us into all truth. The spirit of truth. What did he say? He said, it's better for you that I go. Because when I go, I'm going to send you the, the Holy Spirit. He's going to be with you. He's going to be in you. He's going to lead and guide you into what? All truth. So there's a, there's a thing about truth. Well, what's, what's the thing with truth? Pilate asked that. Pilate said, what is truth? He doesn't know. Pilate being a typical politician... He'll go where the voters go. Typical politician. Typical politician, he goes where the voters go. go. Voters go left, he goes left. Voters go right, he goes right. Voters tell you you need to wear... <laughs> you, need, you need to wear this, do that, say this, jump this high, bow this low, whatever it is, to keep yourself in that position of power and control, they'll do it typical politician what is truth is the question because they don't know what truth is because that's not their standard their standard the the baseline for them is shifting sands it's moving goalposts so they don't stand for anything and the problem with that is you 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 never know what you've got you're you're dealing with a duplicitous, duplicitous, duplicitous person. You're dealing with somebody, something that is going to constantly be shifting on you, and you never know what you're working with. You can't do anything with that. You can't build like that. You can't move forward like that. <clears throat> when you've got things that are true, you've got standards. You have consistency. You know what? When you know one in the book of Proverbs, it talks about things that God hates, and one of the things that He hates is uh, dishonest scales. <clears throat> Why? Well, you know when you go and you buy two kilos of rice, there's there's a standard there. There's a consistency there. You know what you're getting. You know what you're dealing with. If somebody charges you for two kilos of rice, but they only gave you 1.75 kilos of rice, you've got a problem. It's a lie. It's not based on... You, you're you trying to pass something off for a certain standard, but it's really not that standard. You use the, the general understanding, the general accepted principles that everybody else goes by in order to make a functional, healthy, um, fair society and you twist that standard for your own personal, selfish, and evil ends. So God hates that. <clears throat> and people do that. People do that all the time. They will twist what is true and they'll twist something that is and should be <clears throat> Objective should be general understanding. And they twist it, turn it, use it, manipulate it for a desired effect, a desired outcome that is damaging. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's damaging to the people, it's damaging to the soul of a country, soul of a city. It's damaging, awful. No, we. we we need to continue to move forward in this time with what's real, what's true. Because the lie is being increasingly revealed. And that's something that you should also be encouraged by. You should be encouraged by the fact that the lie is being revealed, the lie is being made known. Because before, this stuff wasn't seen, it wasn't so apparent, it wasn't so obvious. Now, oh my gosh, is it obvious. Now, you can see it. You can see it. You can see the control system. You can see the hidden hand. It's not so hidden anymore. 
you can see the the um, the games, the setups, the agendas that are being put forward. You can see how people get taken for a ride. You can see it. You couldn't see it before. Now you can. Okay. Now what are you gonna do with that knowledge, with that understanding? Are you gonna go along to get along? Are you gonna be among those people that say? Um, somebody should do something but you never want to be that somebody right somebody should do something okay all right be somebody <laughs> that's to, that's hijack hijack their thing my gosh how much stuff how much truth has been hijacked and twisted and turned for a nefarious agenda God puts a rainbow in the sky after the flood and after what Noah and the family went through then as a testimony and as a promise after judgment, by it, mind you, <clears throat> that he wouldn't destroy the world again through water. He wouldn't do that again. And what, is, what does the world do? Takes that symbol and look at what they've used it for. This is something God put in the sky as a promise. As a reminder of a promise. And it's used now for something else. That is, that is the way the devil works. Inversion. Inversion is very much a part of what the devil does. See, this is the thing too where it's, it's, it's so often when people want to try to come forward as atheists or come forward as somebody that, you know, doesn't believe or doesn't ascribe to who God is. Well, they should take interest in the fact that everything that the world does and everything that the worlders and the satanic forces in the world do is anti-Christ, opposite of what God does. That is by design. If God says this is good, they want to make it bad. If God says something's bad, they want to make it good. The opposite of whatever God puts in place is what they want to execute and what they want to be a part of. Do you understand? So they would have trees growing upside down in the ground with their roots coming up. That's a paradise world for them. So something is wholesome and decent like a family, like monogamous relationships, like respect for your elders. Just general good principles to have and to live by. They would want to destroy those. They would want to destroy those and um, and turn them into something else. So because their power is also derived from the inversion. Their power is also derived from taking that which God intends <clears throat> and turning it into the opposite. That generates power for them. So, this process right now of this process right now of the worlders always trying to invert and twist and turn everything. Listen. <clears throat> Hold your ground, brothers and sisters. Hold your ground in what's true, what's right, what's logical, what makes sense. 
Listen, we are the ones with the foundation. We're the ones with the anchors to our souls. So that we don't get tossed to and fro in the storm. We're the ones built on the solid foundation. On the rock of truth. That's who we are. So when they try to, when they're flaff, just flopping all over the place, rudderless ships tossed to and fro everywhere, and then they get mad at you, well, let them get mad at you, it's fine. But you speak truth, you be truth, you live truth. You don't have to apologize for what's true and what's real. You don't have to apologize for that. They should be ashamed of themselves. But there is no shame there because they have a seared conscience. And they want you to join them in that. You know what? What people don't seem to get, but they do get it as they get older. You reap what you sow. It's just how it works. So you go with the world, you go with the way the world does things, you follow that path of the world, you are going to reap death. It's going to come back on you. And all these games that they try to play to try to avoid that, it does come back on you. One way or the other, it's going to come back on you. And you're going to face the eternal consequences of your choices and the path that you've gone on. The consequences could be great if you've gone the way of life and truth. But you've got to be the one to make that decision and that choice. And if God's leading and guiding you, you've got to respond. But the worlders, you know, they, they, they might get mad at you for who you are in Christ, but you have nobody, you have no person like that to apologize to, ever. So just stand your ground. It's very simple. Because you know what? If any of those guys got honest with you, if you just ask them, hey, how's that working out for you? They're miserable. They're falling apart. So they come and they say you, they see you and they project all of their junk, all of their garbage onto you. You don't need that. You don't need that. What we do need is we need truth. We need truth in the inner parts. We need to hear the voice of God clearly for ourselves so that we can respond to that which is around us and that which is necessary. We need that. We don't need all the foolishness. We don't need all the lies. We don't need all the deception. We don't need all the games. We don't need all of the, the ways that they try to play us. So you can avoid a lot of that by just cutting them off. You know, stand your ground, and when necessary, just cut them off. Look, in the scriptures, they talk about when people didn't receive a message, they just shook the dust from their feet and carried on. Why? Yeah, no, it's, 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 if somebody doesn't have a heart for truth, carry on. Why are you staying there? They're not ready, and they don't want it. So if they're not ready and they don't want to, why are you there? You know, I know sometimes some of you guys just love these people. You want to see something good come, but look, there's God's timing in all of this too. And sometimes you just got to leave things for a bit and come back. And as you come back to it, things will change. But <laughs> don't waste your time and your energies on that which is the lie on that which is the deception because if you if you do if you try to play their game there's just going to be no peace whatsoever None. There is no peace in their system. There's no peace in their approach. There's no joy in what they do. 
their idea of in the world for them peace is a cessation of external hostilities that's not peace that's not peace in the kingdom peace is within where things have been settled and when things are settled within then things can be settled without truly but if they're not settled within you can't ever settle them without so peace <coughs> won't <coughs> come to this world without the Prince of Peace you've got to have the Prince of Peace to have true peace and they've got to welcome him and if they choose to reject him well it's still his because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the difference is he's not going to ask he's going to come and take that which is rightfully his you understand the difference he gives a window for people to get right and when they choose not to then the die is cast and things carry on and it becomes something else listen you don't want to be on the wrong side of this line when certain things come to pass. You want to be in step with the living God. If you can hear His voice today and He's calling you, come unto Him. He's got. He's the way, the truth, and the life. That's what you need. And in that, you'll have everything that you need. But you got to start with truth you got to start with what's real. you got to start with what God puts for you. Not what man offers you to try to siphon you off, but what God gives to you as he pours you out. All right? We love you guys. God bless you. Drop us an email. Faithmix at gmail.com. We always love to hear from you. God bless you. Keep on keeping on. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Right. Bye. <laughs>